What's the vibe, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Running Off the Screen presented by Raptors Republic. I am the man they call Mac. And I'm going to start this off by asking, do we forgive Goran Dragic? Do we think him backtracking his statements were enough to give him another chance to win us over? Because you would think a guy who has been in the profession since 2004... Uh, been in the NBA since 2008 would have a better understanding of how sports media works and how dangerous it is to put the slightest bit of negativity on the Toronto Raptors name, especially after being traded there. And like I said, he did backtrack and say we have a top-notch organization, um, the most passionate fans in the NBA, um, in a great city and blah, blah, blah. But I know as Raptors fans, we still have our guard up and it will take a lot to win back his trust. So let's just say he speaks to Bobby and voices that he doesn't like the fit at this point of his um, career. Where do we ship him? And like, what are the options? He kind of ruined his trade value, but it doesn't mean that he's not tradable. And I don't see us trading Kyle Lowry for him just to buy out his contract. So I would like to hear from you guys and see if there's like a couple trade scenarios you think may work. Like, would you consider trading Goran Dragic for Eric Bledsoe? Actually, nah. Might as well have kept Kyle Lowry if you're going to trade for Bledsoe. So maybe um, another Eric. What about Eric Gordon or something like, you know, Eric Gordon is a, a veteran Uh, Not known for being the most durable player, but he is a professional scorer, uh, top level catch and shoot ability. Uh, When I look at the Raptors roster, I see a lot of good defenders, but only like one or two solid scoring options. Like the backcourt of Fred Van Vliet and Gary Trent Jr. were pretty inefficient scoring the ball last season. So another added piece that can give you a 20 pointer here or there would be very valuable. Now, Eric Gordon hasn't really played meaningful basketball in a while. So I think he would welcome the opportunity to compete in the Eastern conference. I know he has three years left on his deal for around 18 million per season, but I do believe the final year of his deal is not fully guaranteed. So on the rocket side of that deal, They get Goran Dragic, buy him out, and then they just focus on developing uh, the young crop of guards. I don't know. It it still doesn't feel right, though. I don't know. And I don't see us putting uh, a deal with Dallas together without them or with them putting in young assets and Dwight Powell. So I don't know if that deal makes any sense without that in there. So I can understand why the Raptors... Uh, front office decided to hold on to Dragic for the time being. You know, there will be an opportunity when the season begins to trade him for assets once contending teams start to maybe panic or get desperate after a losing streak or a significant injury. So whatever direction the Toronto Raptors go with moving on from Dragic, I think we can all agree we just need more scoring off the bench. Now, I would like to shift my focus over to the Summer League team. And in the game a couple games ago, I guess, against the Warriors, I wish we saw more assertive Malachi Flynn when the team struggled to score early. You know, the Warriors' defense was very aggressive on him, so we need to see him use counter moves and improve separation when defense is locked in. And you've seen a bit of that. <clears throat> sorry, you've seen a bit of that when he uh, faced Houston as well. But it's only summer league, so I won't put too much into it. And also, I would love to. I, I would like to point out. I I love what I saw from Precious Achua in the Warriors game, and even more so in the Houston game. You know, he moves really well for a guy playing the center spot. Like he literally moves like a small forward. He's technically the size of a large small forward so he gets by uh, at the center spot because of his athleticism and strength but you can tell he can really flourish when he's with our main roster 
But in order for that roster to maximize their potential, I think they're going to need to be the fastest team in the NBA, you know, as far as pace. They will need to mimic that play style or tempo of the 2004 to 2007 Phoenix Suns. You know, just off the rebound, you run. Off a made field goal, you run. You know, just take advantage of their speed at the center spot. Anyway, let's talk about how our rookie draft picks have done so far in these past three games for the Summer League. Um, We have Scotty Barnes. Uh, He has regressed each game. Um, Defense is as good as advertised. Uh, He displayed some traits you can't teach, you know, like uh, court vision, passion, and just straight-up heart. All things you heard during the draft process, you can tell he wants to be great so bad that he's just consumed with impacting the game in every aspect, so it's very refreshing. I know he had a bit of a rough game against Houston, but it happens, you know. It, it better happens now than in the regular season. And to anyone calling him a bust and complaining that he can't shoot, just relax. Just relax. I don't I don't think you can count on one hand. Actually, you can't even count on three fingers a rookie that was drafted as a finished product. There will always be something missing in a rookie's game. He's just a kid. It just so happens also that the one thing that's missing is just shot shot making. That, I'll take that, right? We we have a history of doing that. Why we we drafted Norman Powell who came in not as a shooter. He ended up being our one of our top scorers and just a legit 20 point scorer. Uh, OG Ananobi, he didn't come in as a shooter. He ended up being I think one of 15 guys in the NBA with at least five three-pointers attempted who shot 40% from three. And then we have Pascal Siakam. When he had his head on straight, he was one of our better corner three-point shooters. Pretty much automatic when he sat in the corner shooting threes. So let's just relax, you know? Let's give him some time. Now I want to talk about Delano Banton. He's pretty much the opposite to Barnes in a sense where he has progressed each game. Uh, His length as a perimeter defender has been a great addition. Uh, He had a great game versus the Rockets, uh, showcasing his ability to get to the basket, playmaking, getting his teammates involved. You would like to see him get in the mix um, off the ball, right? A bit more. Finding opportunities, cutting to the basket, where he can catch the ball and just go straight up for a dunk or a layup. You know, his size at the guard spot will allow him to draw a lot of fouls because more often than not, he's going to be guarded by a smaller player. Um, Now I'm going to talk about David Johnson for a bit. And now Coach Matumbo um, alluded to this. He needs to play harder and be more aggressive. You know, all he has all the tools, all the tools to be a great scorer and playmaker. He just needs to push forward, keep at it. And just hold himself at a high standard. I know he left the game with a shoulder injury. uh, But when he's healthy, he will need to lock in and just step up his game a bit. And shout out to Wayne Wright when I'm talking about stepping up game. He's just making hustle plays, hitting shots. He definitely fits right into the mindset of the organization. Um, Against Houston, he led us in scoring uh, in plus minus. He had four steals, two blocks, four three-pointers. Just another player playing as advertised and probably even even better than advertised. And I know uh, in my last video, someone named, I think, I think their name was Dynasty. Uh, they said that Wayne Wright had a good jump shot and would surprise some people. So shout out to them for calling that. Um, so Saturday... We will face the Charlotte Hornets at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, We'll take on another dynamic score in James Booknight along with the athletic Kai Jones and sharpshooting Leandro Ball. In this game, if he suits up, I predict Scotty Barnes will have a bounce back game, putting up a double-double with 14 points, uh, 11 rebounds and 6 assists, 3 blocks, and 2 3-pointers made. It's a pretty ambitious prediction, 
but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again next week. And please remember to like, subscribe, and raise the vibe. Peace.